Greetings everyone, back on the oscillating Tigersaurus. I'm getting somewhere. Look at this. Let me reach the dial here. Nice clean 10 kilohertz sine wave. Hard into clipping. No oscillation. So what have I done? We'll talk about this. Okay, so I want to respond to some comments in the last video. Is it the output transistors? Eh, probably. It's probably it's the output stage really in its entirety. And I did look at these transistors here. These are the ones I put in. I guess they are pretty new on semi. They're a fairly new company. The number I wrote on there is the gain at two and a half amps. I matched a bunch of transistors up and used them. These are just the extra ones. The old ones, most of them were these ECG ones. Uh, they're from the mid 80s. I thought they were older, but 8526, if that's a date code. Now the other amp that works has transistors from the 70s and they're 2N some number, they're equivalents. So yeah, those are older. Maybe those do work better in the amp. I mean it's the same circuit, it still has the long wires running around. It looks factory though, that the other amp. Looks like it was factory so it was probably uh, tested out and everything. Another response is, why don't I go through this amp and, you know, characterize everything. That, that'd take a lot of work. You know, you can simulate the circuit, but I'd have to generate models for these newer versions of these transistors. And all this cabling here, you know, all this length of cables, they have inductance, they have, uh, you know, coupled magnetics, it's just a rat's nest. You'd have to add all that into the simulation. That would take a lot of work. And putting compensation components, stopper resistors, that would be a nightmare. You know, this amp doesn't have sockets because of the, th you know, these out side and inside heat sinks the thickness the transistor pins don't come all the way through so they use these push-on connectors so without a socket to solder to i'd have to hack up all these wires and put the stopper resistors in you might ask well can't you put the stopper resistor on the other end where it connects to the board and the answer is no because the stopper resistor has to be near the base of the transistor it has to be physically located near. You got all this inductance and these wires and things to deal with. You know, that, all that stuff is a lot of effort. I didn't intend on spending on this thing. And yes, I know I'm not doing everything to the full capability, and I am not going to do that either. You know, how much time do you want to put into this project so yeah that, that's my response but what about the uh, stability now what did I do to this thing well let's look at the schematic here so here we go with the schematic um, here's some things I did you know I do things the way I want to do things you can do things the way you want to do it. Who's right? Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the opposite. It's just the way it is. But anyhow, when I went through the walkthrough video of the schematic, you know, several videos ago, and I talked about this output stage has gain. And it's kind of a frowned upon design these days but not ragging on 
Dan Meyer, who designed the amp, he had to do it this way because of the transistors, the limitations of the transistors available. And I'm not going to go through that here. You might want to check that video out. But what I did is turn this stage into a buffer. I turned off the gain. So there's these feedback resistors. I shorted across them. And I removed the shunt resistors. And in doing so, it's now it's just a buffer. I mean, it still functions. It, it's still stacked. It's still paralleled. All that stuff still works. It just doesn't have gain. And boy, did that help with stability. Big time. Well, you're probably saying, well, that doesn't fix the problem because now the array, you won't be able to swing to the rails because of the input stage is on lower value rails and all that stuff. Well, my plan is to adjust these front end of this amplifier and the voltage amplification stage to operate on full rails. So I have to replace all those transistors because, um, for example, these current sources, there would be 45 volts across it just kind of calculating in my head, looking at it, if I use plus or minus 70 volt rails. These are 50 volt transistors, so that's, you know, barely within limits. I could leave them in, but I'll, I'll change them anyway. And the uh, double differential, for example, the emitters of these transistors are going to be near ground potential and the collector will be near rail or at rail because look this line goes right to the rail so this thing is going to be having about 70 volts and they're again they're 50 volt transistors that's not going to work uh, voltage amplification stage these two transistors are large say um, large signal swing if I could talk you know, these could have full across the rail voltage. They could have close to 140 volts, and they're only rated for 90, these transistors. They have to go. Uh, I replaced, in the last video, you probably saw it, I replaced the drivers, this one, this one, this, and this, with BD-139 and 140. Uh, Voltage-wise, they're safe because of the the stacked design of the output stage. Why did I use those particular transistors? Because they're what are in my drawer. That's what I have in my drawer, so I used them. And um, I, they're fine, I think. I had to, of course they don't match up, so I had to put a little crossover connector wiry thing on there. They're not on heat sinks. They don't get hot, but they should be heat synced because bias stability is bad. You now, if I turn the signal off, you know, this is slightly warm. If I cut the signal, it should be at about 100 milliamps. And it'll, uh, it'll fall back, but then it'll start rising again because this is cooling off and this isn't. And because this is configured as a complementary feedback pair, it should be really monitoring the drivers. And uh, it'll, it'll be better if I put a heat sink on this so it cools off. See, if I pinch it with my fingers, cool it off, see it drops. Yeah, bias drops. So, uh, yeah, this monitoring diode should be moved to the driver. But it may, may not have to. If I heat sink it, it'll probably uh, thermally follow the output stage better. Well, this is pretty massive, though. The mass difference might be a problem. I should say the thermal mass, but yeah, enough of that. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done. I mean, I put some bypass caps... And I had to put a hundred, 
100 ohm resistor here because I was losing too much voltage on the input stage. I am still running on my supply at reduced voltages. I'm not out of the woods yet. Okay. So what I first did was, like I said, I turned off the gain in the output stage. Hooked it up and no more oscillation. However, when I went into hard clipping like this, it would oscillate. It would break out into oscillate and draw heavy current. But when I turned it down, it came back out of oscillation. So what I did next is add these base to collector caps on the drivers. You'll see that often in uh, complementary feedback pairs because they tend to be less stable than emitter followers that you will need to add these caps like this. And you want to add the minimum value that works. So I used 100 pico farads. And I can run it into hard clipping, no more oscillation. Then I did some square wave response tests. Let's turn the field tech over to square. There are 10 kilohertz. Now it's not the sharpest square wave. I, the input filter and it's got its little uh, coil wrapped around the cap there, the output coil. Low pass input filter, so you know, it's not not a fast square wave, but and in clipping it is dropping. I wonder if there's a current starvation issue, but there's no wiggles. But I was before I was getting some wiggles on the bottom here at 8 ohms, 4 ohms at maybe a little bit and it would come and go depending on the level. As I turned it up and down it, I'd get a little bit of a continuous wiggle on the negative side. So what I did was this Bougereau cell, snubber, whatever you like to call it, Zobel, this is typically a 10 ohm resistor here, and I was wondering if 1 ohm with a capacitance might have been adding some instability. So I made that a 10 ohm, and it cleared it away, no more. So I tested the amp at 8, 4, and unloaded, and it's completely clear of any oscillation. And now I'm putting a capacitor across the load there. Just want to see if it's going to be stable or not. There's some ringing there. Run it up and down. But it does dampen out. I mean, it's not a great performance, but considering this thing, <laughs> I'd, I'd take this. I would take this. Let's run it. That's a uh, 0.27 microfarad. That's a significant pure capacitance load on the output. At 4 ohms, it's a little better. I get this kind of weird clipping, though. At... I have to look at that, but well, it's not clipping. It's very, very good. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. Let's look at the phase response of the output stage. If you remember in the last video, going from the driver input, uh, where is it? Driver uh, base to the output stage, there was like 90 degrees of lag there. Okay. Now I want to be under the same conditions. I, so I cranked it up to 200 kilohertz. That's what the oscillation was before, around that anyway. So this is the uh, base of the negative side driver. And we'll just probe the second channel on that. It would be nice if I put the uh, camera on that. Look at that. There's a bit of a delay if the camera would care to focus. Hello, 
Are we focusing? There we go. Look at that. Sure, there's going to be a delay, but it sure the hell ain't 90 degrees. Much better. I can see why people these days think that output stages with gain suck. Yeah, they do suck. And uh, getting rid of that. Wow, what an improvement. Yeah, so much better stability. Not that huge phase lag anymore in the output stage. But like I said, I'm not out of the woods yet. I need to redo all the input and voltage amplification stage transistors. I gotta change some values and make sure I'm not gonna overheat anything. I gotta redo the rails, clean them up, get rid of the regulator. Uh, hopefully, this thing will be good then. I don't know. Probably have to do some compensation adjustments. I'm so far I'm leaving the compensation components as they were in the original design. So yeah, hopefully that does it. I'm getting something a little hot over here. I'm probably burning up my newly installed 10 ohm resistor running this thing at high frequency. I'll turn off the field tech. Turn that signal off. And uh, bias is dropping, falling back in. Let me pinch my finger on the transistor. Oh, yeah, that drops. I put a heat sink on there, that'll be just fine. Of course, you got to do all the stability tests and everything. Make sure it's good before it's considered complete. But uh, yeah, this is where it stands so far. I'll probably work on some other projects and come back to this. I got a lot of stuff. So I will wrap it up here and thank you for watching. Sure appreciate all your comments as well. Catch you later.